Empathy might be hurting your anxiety more than it's helping. You might think that it's really helpful and amazing to be empathetic or empathic towards someone, but for those of us who struggle with anxiety and happen to be highly empathetic, this is probably one of the most harmful things you can do, not just to yourself, but to other people. Now, don't get me wrong, empathy is amazing. It helps us connect to other people. It helps us understand and support and encourage and can bring so much healing to our relationships because we literally understand, we get in the well with other people. But the truth is, it can also increase our anxiety. So one of the reasons this happens is because if we see a sad story on the news or we hear a tale of woe or we absorb someone else's trauma dump, think of this like a knapsack, okay? You're carrying a backpack full of rocks and those are your own emotional rocks, right? We all come with baggage and skeletons in the closet and dirty laundry and whatnot. But every time you absorb what someone else or something in something else in the world is going through, you're adding rocks to your own backpack. That creates an emotional weight that's really difficult to shake off, right? So what are you going to do when your knapsack, I keep saying knapsack, backpack gets too heavy? Let's talk about the science of the brain for a second. When we feel empathy, the there are two parts of the brains that are activated. Now, funny enough, these are the same two parts of the brain that are activated when you experience anxiety. They're the anterior insula and the anterior cingular cortex. A lot of neuroscience jargon mumbo jumbo, but how crazy, friends, that the same brain pathway that experiences anxiety also experiences empathy, right? Because our brain cannot distinguish between our own stress and the stress we feel for someone we care about. So what happens? You get cortisol, you get adrenaline, the classic fight or flight response. So what do we do about it? Well, first one, set emotional boundaries. If we go back to this analogy of the well, right? I don't need to be in the well to help you. In fact, it's probably less helpful for me to be in the well with you than it would if I was standing, looking not down on you, but like standing on the edge of the well, throwing you a life preserver, right? Wouldn't that be more helpful? Of course it would. So instead, so instead what we want to do is set up an emotional boundary. Say, okay, I'm over here and you're over here and let's figure out how to get you over here so that you're outside the well also. Now, of course, mindfulness practices, visualization exercises, limiting social media consumption, stuff you already know, it's just a matter of putting it into practice. So remember, empathy is a strength. I am not faulting you for having empathy. I, I think it's amazing, but it needs to be balanced in order to serve us well. We need empathy we need to prevent empathy from becoming a source of stress and instead use it as a powerful, healthy connection for those around us.